We can't think for him. Are you still rolling? Welcome back to the Cutaway Channel. My name is David Olson. I am a filmmaker and director, and today we are going to talk about transitions. If you happen to be editing a video and look through the transition menu in Adobe Premiere, DaVinci, or any other editing software, you might get overwhelmed with the amount of transitions in the menu and the amount of options to choose from. Now, a common mistake a lot of people do is just try and incorporate as many transitions into their videos as much as possible in hopes that it will either hide bad editing or in some twisted sense of delusion, maybe they think it will make their video look cool. Um, I've been noticing a huge influx of videos like that where you have these, these filmmakers just like walking around with smartphones and like just like dragging them across cars and cross feeds and then calling themselves mobile filmmakers. And I think it's a disease and I think they should all be exterminated. But that is a common mistake people have. And I think that it generally stems from the lack of knowledge of transitions, the history, um, the reasons for using it and when and where you should use it in your video. Now I want you to all go and look back at some of your favorite classic movies like Sound of Music, Mary Poppins, um, Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, taking the time to study the way they edited the scenes together to tell a story, you notice they didn't have to rely on any flash transitions or anything fancy because, well, back then they were editing on celluloid and you couldn't do any of these glitch in transitions that are so popular nowadays and they had to rely on just the basics. But with just the basics, you could successfully tell a story and avoid making your video look like garbage. What I'm trying to say is sometimes using too many transitions and relying too heavily on transitions can potentially ruin what could be a good video. So in order to make your video not look too cheap or poorly produced, you come up with a list of three transitions that every editor should know. So if you stick to these three basic transitions and master when and where to use them, not only will you see a significant increase in the production value of your videos, You'll also be able to tell a story a lot better and in a lot simpler way. Now our first transition is the cut. Now the cut is the most basic transition there is. You won't even find this effect in your transitions menu in any software that you have because all it is is taking one clip and another clip and putting them together and you have your transition. Now you might wonder why we're even talking about the cut because everybody knows who that is. It people want necessarily even call the transition but you'd be surprised about how much people undervalue the importance of cutting within a scene and how you can drive a much better story with how you cut and when you cut that is basic editing technique is the smoothest cleanest and fastest way to transition from one frame to the next in a split second and the best part is the viewer won't even notice that it's a transition, but sometimes that's what you want. You know, in most cases and in most scenes when you're editing, the last thing you want is some bull flash transition to distract the audience from the main essence of what you're trying to accomplish, and that's telling a story. Now, in terms of using cuts in your scenes, there are really so many ways to do it. There's cutting on action, there's cutting on motion, there's cutting to a reaction, there's even, you know, using cutaways ah! get it get it ah! <laughs> so funny now in a serious note the cutaway shot is a great example of using the cut transition in your scene so the cutaway is a great way of for example showing someone else's pov in a certain environment or a certain scene or it can be a cool way of fusing two plot lines together in one short period of time so again there are many different ways of using the cut it's all about you to find out which way works best with the footage that you have now our second transition is the dissolve where the lap dissolve or the cross dissolve is probably the most used transition in cinema history and it's probably one of the earliest recorded in cinema history as well now a dissolve is what happens when 
you have an image fading out and as the image fades out another image is fading in and during some point the two superimpose in photography this is called you know double exposure and what it accomplishes is a much smoother transition in between scenes than if you were to cut abruptly so this can be used to showcase a passage of time used to showcase a change of mood it can be used in so many different ways and that all depends on the clips you use the duration of the dissolve and when and where you put it in your scene so the dissolve originated back in the 1950s when the french new wave was still in its infancy if you will and the filmmakers didn't like the abruptness of the jump cut so by accident they discovered the film dissolve and with that it took over the french new wave but not only that it took over the world of cinema as well and in no time at all the rest of the world including hollywood was using it in each one of their pictures just like the cut the dissolve is a transition that you see in almost every tv show commercial or movie but you don't necessarily notice it but that's the good part think about it almost every sitcom you've ever watched has used the dissolve in one way or another to the nth degree well, let me just set the scene for you it's a let's say a coffee shop and there are a group of friends hanging out not at work for some weird reason on a weekday um and we want to cut from the coffee shop back to their apartment building. Now, during the coffee shop scene, you'll notice that they don't use dissolves at all when they're shooting scenes within the coffee shop because everything is still in one location in one time. So one character is talking to the other one about dinosaurs and cut from what one person is saying and then cut to the reaction or cut to the reply. And so you're utilizing the first transition that we talked about very well because that's what it's meant to be used for. Now, if we were to transition from one location to the other, let's say the coffee shop to an apartment building, we would use the dissolve there. So what you would normally see is a shot of the cafe and we dissolve into a cutaway. Get it? Ah! Ah! They get it dissolve into a cutaway of the apartment building and then dissolve into wherever the next scene is being held. So, um, an oversized apartment. Now, when using dissolves or any transition for that matter, you always want to use them with purpose. You wouldn't want to use a cross dissolve every few seconds because not only would that look stupid as but it would also be confusing to the viewer because they wouldn't understand what you're trying to say. Every transition has its use and when it's used right, it's perfect. But there's also the risk of overusing it or using it when it shouldn't be. And that's when you run the risk of potentially ruining your video. Make sure to be considerate of the length of the dissolve as well. For instance, a shorter dissolve could imply a shorter passage of time and a longer dissolve could imply a longer passage of time. Now, in my case, I tend to keep my dissolves at around a second because in my opinion, that's the safest way of using it where you don't risk of going too long or you don't run the risk of dissolving too short and it's too abrupt. And it's just long enough that it's smooth on the eyes when you transition from one scene to the next. Now, much like the dissolve transition, it's also used to describe a change in time, scenery, or subject but in a more dramatic way, if you will. Now, the fade to black transition is probably the most handy tool in your arsenal if you want to add some drama to your sequence. One example of how the fade to black is used perfectly is in almost every movie trailer you've seen or every blockbuster movie trailer you've seen. Now, if you notice, they always begin to build suspense by having slow moving images and then you fade out to black some voiceover comes on um about the end of the world and then fades back into another shot and then fades back out and slowly builds up suspense but if you notice it's a much more efficient way to create suspense instead of just cutting or dissolving in between shots because there's that small period of time where everything is black and you don't know what's gonna come up on screen next. And that's the beauty of the fade to black transition. But again, use it sparingly and use it at the proper time and don't use it 
every other scene or every scene. Now what's fun about these three transitions is that you can use them together to achieve different results. Now going back to trailers, we we're just touching on how fading to black and create suspense. Now, as that suspense builds up, you want to include some more shots and there's some more emotions. Let's say you want good action in there. Now, a great way to get a reaction from your audience, instead of just fading into black and then fading out to black in the next scene, you can fade to black and then just jump cut to the next scene. So as the scene fades out, all of a sudden the viewers are hit with a flash image of something that captures your attention because now you've broken them out of the slow suspense building journey that you've been taking them on this whole time. For fades and cuts, the trailers are a great way of showcasing how these simple cuts can evoke so many different reactions just by using them right. Clearly as an editor, the choice is naturally yours, but just remember, be smart about where you put your transitions just like in writing, just like in everything about production, everything that you do serves the story. So the purpose of your transition is actually more important than the actual transition itself. Make sure you know what emotion you wanna get out of your audience and then try and get it. But remember, don't overdo it and serve the story. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have your own personal favorite transitions that you use in all of your videos and all of your edits. To be honest, there are a ton of transitions that we can use in our videos. These are just a few. These are the basics. These are the fundamentals and my personal favorites. But if you have your own or if you have any you want to add to the fundamentals or if you have any you want to add to the list of transitions that every editor should know, list it down in the comments below and let's talk about it. And now for my favorite and least favorite part of the video. No, we'll just do a notification animation. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to catch you on the next video. What am I supposed to say? Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.